Patriot. Welcome to Social Visits. So as we get into I am here with the chef owner of Cabisera and yeah. one The main, yeah. right. Ah, right. The one who paid the bills. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. So. I'm Aljudin Francisco. So, um, well, I've been, I wasn't probably aware that I've been in exposure to food, food. and food scene since my childhood uh, until I realized that, wait, this is the food world. Um, yeah, I grew up in and and the suburb area. Believe me or not, I've seen directly how they portray the pig, the cow, the goat, the chicken, free range. And my, when we are a kid, we have this little pellet gun, which is yeah. we chase the chicken, free range chicken. Yeah. So we were like, oh, what's the food for today? Oh, I want chicken. Okay, let me get the shot gun, the air gun. We air call gun. it the air like gun. Like a pellet. Just yeah, a pellet. like a pellet yeah. gun. And then, yeah, we waited for a few seconds and just, you know, I, yeah, it's, it's a little hard. So <laughs> that's, that's your background in food. Yes. Did you go to school for food? Yes, I did. Okay. Yes, cool. this year. Oh, just, just this year. year. So I, after being in the food industry, in a cafe, in a restaurant business, um, I decided like, oh, this is this is the route that I wanted to go. Mm. This is this is the way where where, where I, I'm seeing myself. So you know what I said, you know, this is probably the time to to give a proper um, learning or you know schooling to this one. So I uh, my my apparently one of my chef are doing a course and she mentioned to me, hey, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to ICE, I'm gonna take this class and this and that. And I was like, you know what, let me join you. Nah. Uh, yeah. So you were a business owner first because Cabecera is originally a coffee shop. Yes. And yes. then so now you serve food, I just ate there. And so you have, you know, traditional foods with your own twist because it didn't, it tastes different from, you know, other right. adobos and afritanas. Right. Is it very influenced because you're from Northern Philippines? Yes. Uh, yes. Nueva Ecija or Nueva Ecija. Nueva Ecija. Nueva Ecija. Yeah. Uh, my mom originally is from the Mountain Province. Mm. She's a Negorot. And my dad is from Bulacan. Wait, so... Yes, the Cabicera menu is my menu. So I have two chefs working with me. Actually, three now. Mm. And then I noticed we were we ate there this afternoon. And you get a lot of non-Filipinos coming into the restaurant mm -hmm. also. So what's the reception like? What do, what do the people tell you about the food or do they know? I know someone came in today, we were eating. She's like, what's that? I want that, I want that. Like, yes. Just looking at the food. Yes. So, so that that is actually, I'm very grateful that I think we found our home in the Lower East Side uh, because people in that neighborhood are, I would say they're very open-minded. Open, yeah. Very, very open to start, to taste and to to educate themselves. What are ube biko? Ube biko. We have two biko. We have moringa biko, which moringa, is manungai, manungai. Oh my and gosh. ube biko. Right. right. And then this is the sapin sapin. Very pretty. So yeah. they're all. Yeah. It's all um like sticky rice, rice flour based dessert. Mm -hmm. This is the cassava. cassava. Yeah. Cassava. One of my favorites. Yeah. Cassava's a root crop, like uh. Yes. Cassava like like a potato, like oh like. Yuka. Yeah. And the leche flan, yeah. Um, I would, yeah, I, 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 I take pretty much pride of this one because a lot of, a lot of our customers keep coming back because they said it's different from you know there's a leche flan in the in, Mexican, in, yeah, Mexican yeah, yeah. In Italy, flan, in Paris, right. oh, they have different yeah. types of leche flan. Oh, well, like you ours. taste it. You taste will. it. Will. So what is the difference? So the different, yeah, the different of the maha, I don't know if you can see, there's like a little black. Oh, that is that sesame? Inside. What is it? It's a mung bean. Mung bean. So you feel there's a movement of new young Filipino-American entrepreneurs coming together and they gather in Cabecera, mm -hmm. or I don't know, maybe you're their leader now or mm -hmm. something. So how did that come about? Was that after pandemic that you, or was it even before? that you started because you carry some entrepreneurs products mm -hmm. in Cabecera mm -hmm. in Allen Street yeah, like that's correct. you have. Honestly, it was take uh, bring in to me 
by mm -hmm. one of our neighbor um, not far from Cabisera. There is a uh, church. It's called Three Stone Ministry. Okay. So that was during the pandemic. I get a call from the ministry. And they were like saying, hey, we want to have like sponsorship or things mm. like that in here and there. And my response was, oh, this is not the right time for us to do Correct. a sponsorship. Yes. So she came in and I misunderstood. So they are, they wanted to sponsor, meaning they're gonna buy the food and the drinks nice. and then we will deliver it to the hospital. Right. So, and then after three days, three rounds, of course they are like their short, short and yep. donations yes. and money that was funded. So, and I was like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting excited again. I'm right. cool, back in yeah. kitchen, I'm cooking and then things like that. And I told her like, hey, would you be open if I put this in the public? Okay. Let me just, you know, let's right. see if we can get, you know, support from other people. Right. Because first, people working in the hospital, it's it's a lot of hassle for them to get out, to get take food, out, change right. in, and then a lot of restaurants are closed. Yeah. I mean, even coffee shops are yeah. closed. Even yes, you know, yes. big chains of coffee New shops York are was closed. Hit very hard. Yeah. So, and I posted it. I posted it on Instagram. In the same night, believe me or not, mm. and the same night, we've got peoples, peoples, a lot of people mm. send a message asking the Banmo how they can donate oh. and things like that. People. And we just call oh. it the coffee run. And what we do is that every coffee run we call we we, we have we, we number it. Okay. Round one, round okay. two, so round three. How many three. Did, did you end up with? Oh my God! I think we went to hundreds. Wow. A hundred. Very cool. And so that's how people became aware of you. That's how people wow. became aware of what we were doing, and um, people from out of state. Nice. Hawaii, yeah. believe me or not, even California. California. Yeah, exactly. yeah there. It was always your rice meals. Is what yes, we were sending. yes. What yes. a way to spread spread Filipino food. Yeah, too. that's what I mean. Then it's become like a big hit that, oh, Filipino are sending food. Wow. And they were like, yeah, everyone. So we always do Filipino food, right. desserts, um, drinks. Uh, so so it's. So they know that it's Philippines. So one one of the coolest things about what we've been doing is every delivery we put the name who actually give us the money. Oh. And we calculate how much uh, she sent to us based on the pricing of the coffee. Like right. regular coffee would oh, cost you four dollars, oh, yeah. but during that time we give it two fifty. Uh huh. You know, because it's a community yeah. work. We wanted to put our takes as well too. And you know, uh, that's a donation. So right after the I'm whole pandemic. My Sanzo, shout yeah. Out. And then the community actually I mean the city opens for outdoor mm -hmm. city. That's how we invited my friends who helped me during the pandemic. Oh. And now we just pop up in the space nice. and things like we started with one vendor two vendor three vendor and now we have collected a lot of vendor that have been in cabisera and they've been wanting to come back to cabisera